is Sherry Hayes with MomDevice.com and today I'm going to be talking to you about our plans for American history, kind of like how we like to do our history studies or our world studies as I like to call them. And I'm going to share with you some of the, some of the uh, resources and some of the plans I have and some of the ways we go about things. And I hope they will bless you, I hope they help you figure out how maybe give you some ideas for what you can do because I know this is kind of confusing and it's nice to know that we have some actual concrete examples and not just theory. <laughs> okay, enjoy. So this is something to do with our studying of American history. Now I consider that to be world studies and world studies has to do with God working in man's life, man working among, with each other, the different nations of the earth, the geography of the earth, you know, everything history, how people work together, how people have wars, <laughs> and stuff like that. So, um, this is an, this is the basement. Okay, first, I guess I should show you. You can see this. Um, and so, this is like the room where we all sit together and we enjoy our learning time together. Some would call it morning time, group time, whatever you want to call it. So, I have um, a uh, spiral notebook just like my girls and I when I'm going to study something that I want them to study what I do is I will notebook it myself so um, right now we are studying American history and so I have made my lists lists of people lists of events lists of how I want to go about things um, here's like a basic timeline that I've created Here's some notes we did yesterday. So you can see I put that all in this little book. And I did also my um, Middle Ages I, a thing on in here. So um, then I, I have primarily for learning American history, I have two primary things, uh, resources. The first one is Heritage History. Now I, I don't know why I always call this Heritage Homeschool, but it's Heritage History. It's a free, 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 free thing online, and it, it is, it's public domain books that they put together, and they've made like a program out of all of them, and you can see this is one of the beautiful illustrations, um, um, so I just put this in the front because I liked it, but um, one thing I do is I go through there, and I glean things from the site that are amazing, so I've got for American history, I have like their timelines I've printed out. And I've labeled them according to the era that they belong in. And like they have both the characters and um, of those times. And they have a, like a listing of events with the dates. So this is kind of interesting. Okay. They also have some different reading suggestions here. And um, then they do that for all of the different eras. They offer um, maps. And I'll, you know, I'll show you that. I think I've shown you that in my kids' stuff. But um, they have maps you can put out. They have these, like I said, it's writing, uh, reading assignments. And you can just go from there. Now, we notebook through the whole entire thing. So what I do basically um, is we will have our time, and I will be reading aloud, and we will just be discussing, and then I'll write things on this board that they have to then write in their spiral notebooks. Also, from this, then, I have taken and put everything, uh, a basic idea of the different epochs of American history, and I put them on these little cards so that we can, as we discuss things, we'll kind of see how things work together. Now, I switch these up. <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's me. But anyway, <laughs> i got to fix that. But anyway, this is something that just keeps helps keep us, uh, keeps us, mindful of how everything put, fits together and you can see this these um scriptures and these notes are actually um this these are from a book which i'm using and this is the my other resource is the america's providential history and i got this idea from someone's website i don't remember where but anyway this is a Fascinating book. I don't think I I totally and 100 percent agree with every assertion in here, but I tell you, it is fascinating, and I think that going through this is going to be really opening our eyes to God's providential hand in our history. So we're enjoying that. There's a lot of scripture, as you can see in this book. So that's one thing we're doing to re going to that through that, and then I am also using a book. And I'm reading aloud, and it's called, this is the table of contents, it's called America First. 
So what I do with Heritage History is I will take the PDF form and I will print out the, um, the actual uh, table of contents. And then I'll go through that and we'll kind of click check it off as we go through it. Now, I do this sort of to see how, how fast we'll have to go through to get through the whole thing in a reasonable amount of time. But this is just a collection of stories. We're, we're looking at this whole thing through the eyes of a storyteller and not necessarily just through facts and figures and all that kind of stuff because that is boring and horrible. So, <laughs> and if I had to study history like that, I would absolutely hate it. <laughs> Another book that I like to use with my younger set is American Pioneers and Patriots. I'm reading this to my 10-year-old. Even though she thinks it's maybe a little bit baby, it's still interesting to her. So you could, you could um, read this um, to your elementary age students as they're understanding the American history. I wouldn't use this as a primary book because it doesn't really explain the context of these stories. But if you are doing a general study of America, if you want something that will really enthuse them, and I mean, there are sections in here that explain how they made soap and like the, like the birch bark canoe thing where the Indians are making a birch bark canoe. That is really cool. Let's see if I can find it. One of them, let's see. Let's see if I can find one. Oh, this is about how people um, lived on ships when they were traveling over the ocean to the New World. This is really neat. So there's sections on a birch, making a birch bark canoe, soap making, all kinds of that stuff. And so this is really a fascinating book for kids. This is the older version. There's a newer version that, and it's from um, Christian Liberty Press, you can see. So that's that's where you will find these. And you can also find these used all over the place. They've been around for a while, and they're really excellent. Okay, now within the heritage history, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, hopefully I have, so let's see if I can find it if I have them. Um, no. Okay, anyway. So. Another thing that I do that I think I would recommend it to anyone else who is trying to build up their history library is to get old, like coffee table type books, uh, reference books that people get rid of all the time. And so you can find these for a song. Uh, if, you want, if you go to the thrift store to get some shoes or something for your kids, then look in their book section and try to find these, the old boring looking reference books. This one is uh, the American Heritage Pictorial Atlas of the United, St of United States History. And um, this right here, my dears, is amazing. I think maybe I paid two dollars for this, something like that. And this is amazing, amazing. Um, it has, look at these, look at this. This is the Ice Age. This is explaining how they think, they believe that people, the Native Americans came to America. So the beginning from the beginning, they have the Aztecs, the Incas, and there's like a timeline here, and the Mayas probably are in there. And then here's the um, Native Americans, how they, what, what portions they live, they think, you know, they've since disproved some of that. But anyway, here are some early drawings, um, and then, so it doesn't just have maps. It has um, drawings of people that lived during that time of these different areas. Battles of the Revolution. Um, it's just fascinating, these maps. Oh, I tell you what, you can just sit here for hours and hours. Sometimes we'll sit and we'll start looking and we, you know, we, we lose track of time. It'll be an hour or two and we've been studying, <laughs> staring at these books. This is a National Geographic Atlas of the World. Now, this is done in the 80s. Okay, so some of these countries are not going to be the same. This is going to be outdated in a lot of ways. However, most of the information is still accurate. Like, Paris, France is still in the same place. So, there is so much you can glean from a book like this. And um, I do not agree with the evolutionary bent of the National Geographic. However, most of their other information is pretty reliable, and it's, it's really nicely done. So, yeah, that's why we use this. So, this is interesting. This is what scientists believe that they know about the universe. This is the heavens, and we have the stars, the constellations, and this is, we have this, actually I didn't know this, but we had found this old map from a, a old, sorry, poster in a national, old National Geographic, and it's on the wall <laughs> over there, and we have it here in this book. Mm, interesting. Anyway, so there's the Earth's moon, 
planet Earth, and here's like the spectrum of light. Here's like the different forces that they believe are in the universe. These are all theories, but you know, based on a, a lot of things they've discovered. Climate, some people are into the plasma, some are into all kinds of stuff, but anyway. Dynamic Earth, continents adrift, and this is Pangea, you know, you hear about that. And we believe that's pre-flood, and then the flood caused everything to move apart, which you can kind of see how that could happen, but... And, oh, then we go into the maps of the ocean floor. Oh, excellent, excellent. So interesting, so fascinating. And we sit here for hours and hours, and I'm doing this again on my phone. <laughs> And here's the maps, I mean the flags, and some of these have changed too. But, you know, see, you have the general ideas, and you have like these different states, and, you know, so there's a lot of information that is always the same. And you can get these books, like I said, you know, of course these cities have all grown and changed. But um, this was, this was pre, um, before the fall of the Soviet Union, so... You know, things are going to look a lot different in that sense. This is Antarctica. That hasn't changed, right? Um, so I, I'm not afraid to use these kind of resources. And I can also teach my children how to use one of these map indexes and, you know, all the different parts of using a map. And we can just go on and on and on. This is like almost a whole curriculum in and of itself. And it, and it relies not on anything more than just the fascination of the learner, which is the best learning available. And even Charlotte Mason says that, you know, when we force people to learn things, it's not as effective as if... Now, I know that there's a quote, okay, but I'm, I just am paraphrasing. Basically, that if you allow people to study with a passion and an enthusiasm that comes from a natural desire, the information they glean is going to stick a lot longer than if you said, read this and answer these questions and take this test. It's just natural to understand that. I think all of us have experienced that in our lives. So that is pretty much what we are using. Oh, besides notebooking pages. Oh, I should show that just a second. So also, this is something I can show you. Um, I have created all kinds of nifty notebooking pages that I can use, I can assign, or the, actually I let the kids choose which one they want. This is like for a person and they can say good, bad, or other. <laughs> um, and they, there are different formats of this. They can choose to study a person or a country. There's another one I created. And here's like, um, this is the life of. So this is like a biography that they can use. And this, it's a simple one for a child that doesn't really feel comfortable drawing or writing that much. But they can do a little bit here and there. They can do stick figures even, and they can write a sentence or two. And sometimes even you might have to write the sentences for them. The idea is they get to take the information and make it their own. Um, I, I, here's one that I created. It's kind of light. But here's something you can draw, something bigger. Um, just like that. So anyway, those are some of the resources I'm using. I also, in our homeschool experience, I have... Now let's see, where did I put that? Anyway, I have actually taken a whole bunch of these notebooking pages and put them and copied them out and put them in a three-ring binder and set it up to where they, I call it the catalog. So they can go through there and they can pick whatever type they would like to use for a certain thing. And then if they've made a really nice notebooking page, we will put it in a, a sheet protector and put it in their three-ring binder so that it can be saved and they can have something to go back over in years to come and enjoy that. So that's basically what we're doing. So I hope you enjoyed this little overview of what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, if you could, just like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.